Hey everyone, welcome back. Miss Wilkins here for Orchestra on the Go. Okay, this is a pre-shifting and shifting exercise video for the lower strings. Um, you just want to make sure that you're thinking about in your pedagogy plans to include shifting much earlier for the lower strings than for the violins and the violas. Certainly for the bass, that one, that has to be paramount. That is first. That's the first thing. But then the next thing on your list is thinking about getting the um, cellos into second position. Um, and, and probably before you get everyone else, violins and violas, into third position. The cellos need to learn second position. So um, just some preliminary um, exercises. Um, and there's this is by no means exhaustive, but if you go to Strategies for Teaching Strings um, by Donald Heyman and Robert Gillespie, there's an enormous amount of more exercises. I just wanted to put in one place a very quick reference. So if you're heading off to plan some lessons or you're heading off to the next school and you just want to do a really quick refresher of what you need to get into um, your, um, your class for the day, some shifting exercises, just a quick refresher to have those on the mind. Okay, so uh, the first thing is you, you want to make sure that your, your, your lower strings are set up properly and they're using proper technique. Obviously, that goes without saying before you introduce these things, making sure that everything is looking pretty good in their setup. So um, the first thing is you can talk about riding the rails, putting your fingers in between the strings, and just getting that motion to be initiated with a good left arm and a proper, proper height of the elbow. Okay, And then, you know, when you're a little more advanced, you can even... You know, I have the idea, planting that idea of going all the way down. Some cellists call this ski jumps, where you have to bring the thumb around and come right off the edge of the fingerboard. And that's because you're preparing this idea that this area of the cello is viable and you will get to that. Um, so we're just opening that up and then maybe doing some ski jumps for the basses and the cellos. The next thing is the Gemiani chords, where you put your fingers on all four strings, so now you're riding on the strings themselves and you're initiating that motion. Okay, then, um, then the next thing I would look at is moving towards the harmonic. Now, hopefully, you've been um, introducing the harmonic um, for all the instruments. For the lower strings, you're going to use the third finger when initiating it, um, and so all of the rules apply for executing a harmonic. I won't touch on that here but there's um, some more on that in some other videos. Um, but using the third finger in between um, a major uh, scale is also one that you can think about getting to. This might be slightly out of order, but I'll show it to you now and you can reorder things. So we're gonna play the... Play just a one string scale. To initiate that movement, and then I always forget that one. So taking something simple and having them reach up and try and find that harmonic. Now another thing that might be a little bit more complex are um, a one-string finger. A one string one finger um, scale. So just only using one finger. Okay now I do like to talk about the anatomy of the shift for all instruments and there's a couple of things that you can you can talk about. Um, there is the notion of pressing the finger play a note, releasing it, then executing, moving, and then pressing again. So plop, release, shift, plop, release, shift. Now I know some of the lower strings like to talk about keeping, once you plop, keeping that into the string as you move. So you might want to isolate um, those two different um, notions. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
and then contrast that with keeping it all the way in without releasing it. And then bringing it back and making it sound normal where you balance those two variables. lower strings especially for bass they like this idea of keeping the finger in the string during the shift so you might just want to talk with experts on that and how you deal with your lower strings um, but this idea for the upper strings of releasing when you're in the middle of the shift um, is also a valid uh, point as well so just some, some ideas to keep in mind then next um, you can also do um, some tissue paper playing and this is just to check, making sure that when they're moving, you've got thumb and fingers that are loose. And this promotes this idea of fluidity. And then you can also have the kids play that. Okay, just to have that motion using a prop. And then the last thing is to finger um, a familiar melody with uh, just one finger. So. I would first introduce that to the students, make sure everyone's comfortable with playing Twinkle, um, just the first quarter of it and with uh, in first position, and then find it. going to be a little bit more um, lower here for the cello just making sure that the thumb stays in the neck of the instrument okay and we're not quite we don't need to remove the thumb because we're not high enough on the, on the fingerboard yet so just doing that with the one finger melody all right guys that's it for uh, lower string shifting and pre-shifting um, just remember you can build this in super early you know, as long as kids have a fairly good technique, you can build in some of these introductory motions just to get make sure that there's no tension being collected and, and held for too long. Um, and it's a great just um, tension release um, for all um, your instruments in between songs or tuning or as a brain break. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.